Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. The number one reason people struggle to close deals is because they don't have enough money. And that's because they don't have enough passive investors waiting on the sidelines, itching to get in. Is this you? The only way to fix this is to flip the script so that instead of chasing money, money chases you. By flipping the script, other syndicators raise all the money they need in 48 hours or less. How do they do it? They apply the techniques that you'll learn at their virtual Raising Money Summit on October 1st through the 4th. Adam and his team are pulling back the curtains with top syndication experts to share their secrets, systems, processes that empower them to never struggle raising capital ever again. And you can learn this from home while watching online. Are you ready to start learning how to attract millions of dollars for your next real estate deal? Listeners get a special pricing of only $97 by texting Whitney to 55444. That's Whitney to 55444. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Karen Williams. Thanks for being on the show, Karen. You're very welcome, Whitney. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for you making it happen. Just so the listener knows, it's 6.30 where she is. So she's <laughs> dedicated to being, being there this morning and making it happen. So thanks for that, Karen. But Karen Absolutely. and her partner, Peter, who was previously interviewed uh, on the podcast, are our co-founders of a unique private investment portal that includes an element of deep investor education and resources with a focus on real estate investing, investor community collaboration via ongoing monthly learning forums and a Slack channel, plus access to invite only opportunities to participate in real estate syndications and private placements with seasoned asset managers proven to consistently achieve their projected investor returns. Uh, Karen, grateful to have you on the show. Give us a little more about who you are, maybe what you all are doing in case the listener didn't hear Peter's show as well. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and just, you know, what, what you all are up to, what this portal is, and, and let's dive into your all's specialty. Sure, sure. Happy to do so. Um, well, yes. Yeah, so Peter Badger, uh, my infamous partner, uh, uh, Brit, and um, you know, fellow real estate investor for many years now. Uh, we started off investing together, kind of, um, as they say, with uh, toddlers, kind of parallel play. I was investing, learning. He was investing, learning. We were collaborating and sharing notes. And we found out how valuable that process was. I know Peter mentioned like sort of the RIA meetups that a lot of deep investors get into the real estate investor association meetups that are in basically like every city across the U S um, and for us, we're kind of creating this private network of an investor mastermind specifically geared toward people who are like what we were, which was um, corporate professionals, um, intense jobs or business owners, entrepreneurs, where you are full on in that active income on a daily basis. And you really aren't interested in being full on in real estate, but you want to learn the intellectual understanding behind those investments. So you make the smartest decisions. So that's kind of what our portal is, is all about. It's a sort of mastermind collaboration investor group for the passive investor who is accredited and wants to um, really leverage their ability to make money in real estate by participating in these private placement syndications. Nice. No, that's awesome. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, to have a place that an investor needs to go to, or can go to learn, uh, especially when you're, when you're that busy professional and you're just in the thick of it every day in your job, it's kind of like, you know, planning for retirement or whatever, right? It's like you're, you're told to do it when you're like 23, right? But who does that? You know, or very few, uh, you know, most it's, you know, they're 45 and all of a sudden they're like, well, where did all the time go? I better get started. You know, exactly. So. And the thing is too, is we're, we're all taught to drink the Kool-Aid of this old model that no longer works. You know, we just like we have this old industrialized education system that was meant to educate what it was meant to bring people off the family farms and entrepreneurship into the factories of the city, right? Our education system, unfortunately, is still the same. So it's setting people up to be workers. And we all know that you do not build wealth 
by working a W-2 job. You build wealth one of four ways. You know, it's through owning and operating businesses. It's through owning stock markets, right? So it's through owning assets, right? It's through maybe um, right. owning or trading commodities and then real estate, of course. And I mean, so that's really the power. And we're trying to get people really to understand and adopt the Kiyosaki mindset of, you know, it's about the assets, not the income. So using your income rich W-2 job to buy more assets that produce more income and, you know, the wealth just, um, you know, evolves from there. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, you know, I'd love to hear a little yeah. more about what you all are doing with this community. Um, and, and so I'm sure there's plenty of listeners that would love to be a part of it as well. Uh, and yeah. we gain from that. Uh, yeah. But then also the listener who uh, is an active operator, uh, you know, and is trying to, has their own kind of community of, of their investors, maybe you can provide some, some tips for them to help nurture and, and train and teach, you know, provide value to that, that investor base that they have as well, uh, from mm -hmm. what you all have learned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, okay. So uh, one key element we've learned is give people what they, what they want, not what you think they need. Um, because often people don't quite realize what they need, but they know what they want and they're willing to invest in what they want, whether it's their time, their money, their energy, um, their focus, that kind of thing. And so one of the things we're experimenting with actually right now this month in, 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 in September, I know this will come out a bit after, but we have taken, um, we have the fourth iteration of our education portal. It is expansive. I mean, there are, you know, 25, 30 hours of content in there, let alone all the homework and the tools, the models, all this stuff to kind of apply and reinforce your learning. And so what we have discovered is we wanted to teach people to fish because we thought we don't want people to blindly trust us. I mean, that's nice. That's a nice compliment, but we want them to understand. So they feel confident and competent. And so at any rate, we put a lot of effort into educating down to the nth level, even though they're not going to operate the asset, we want them to understand every single aspect of what it's going to take to execute that business plan and come out with a positive outcome. But we've discovered these busy working professionals, remember they're income rich and they are time poor. And so you know how it is, right? When you have a personal trainer versus you've got to go to the gym yourself. When you have a personal trainer, somebody's holding you accountable, somebody's waiting for you to show up, you are a lot more likely to invest, right? And so sort of high engagement is one of the things that we've learned. So we started with a live teaching only model. It's very exhausting. And so we have um, pre-recorded all of our stuff now, but we still do weekly coaching and then we do monthly Q and A's with the full group. So keeping that engagement together really helps people stay invested in their learning. And, um, and you learn so much from the collaboration. Learning is a social process. So I would say, even though people want the convenience of online available anytime, they still need the sort of high touch engagement reinforcement. I think particularly in these times of COVID, people are like sick to, deca <laughs> sick to death of just Zoom calls, right? They really, they want to engage. They want to share screens. They want to like um, really have a work session with you. You know what I mean? Really have applied rather than just being completely passive in the learning process. You got to pull them in. The Slack channel helps us do that too because we can have all kinds of conversations categorized based on is it about a deal? Is it about a concept? Is it about an asset class? And um, it just makes it easier for people to step into it if they're new to the group and go, oh my gosh, look at all these things that have already been answered. So it becomes this fabulous resource for people. We started with the Facebook group and more and more we're finding people that are really um, overwhelmed and, and kind of over the social media thing. And some people created a Facebook um, profile just so they could be a part of our group. So ultimately we have eventually just recently moved to Slack, getting really, really good feedback. It's easier for people to actually track and find the conversations. And so I would say if you're going to be running sort of like, I mean, we call this kind of like, it's kind of like our book club, but it's our investor club, you know, and, and, yeah. and it's really meant to, to elevate everybody's learning and you need engagement for that to happen. That's really, really critical part. So that's the, that's the thing I think we've spent the most energy on is 
how do we engage people and keep them coming back and, and, and not just taking in knowledge, but now sharing what they've learned? Because I know Peter's mentioned this. I mean, we've had great investors in our group that surface blind spots that you're like, oh my God, I haven't thought about it from that perspective. You yeah. know, so this is really important, right? That, that social process of learning is really important. What's the, what's the end goal for the platform? Is it to, uh, I mean, obviously for you all to build an investor base or, or to be able to raise capital for your own deals, or is it mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, is there a, uh, uh, you know, income from this kind of platform? What could a listener, if they had something like this, uh, you know, what, what do they expect or what's your goal from it? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I would say, you know, our goal from the beginning was really just to not use the education portal itself as necessarily a money maker for us, um, like people do with selling courses and stuff like that. It's really meant to be because we do like a lifetime um, entrance fee, and then you get access to all of the education, all of the evolution of that education because it continues all of the new um, monthly calls that are included in new asset managers, all these sorts of things, right? So that and access to the deals is included in your one lifetime fee. Um, But uh, at any rate, I'm sorry, I lost track of your question. (laughs) Just your goal, you know, uh, you know, is there, what's their goal? But we're not, yeah. So we're not, we're, we're really kind of looking to cover our due diligence travel and stuff like that. Cause we do go to places all over the globe, but for us personally, for Peter and I, we literally want a a group of like-minded, there's about 60 in the group now. If we ended up with a couple hundred to a few hundred people that basically continue to invest with us over the next 10, 20, 30 years for life. And we all continue to elevate our own level of knowledge and investing. I mean, that would, that would really be it. So we're building community. This is community. We're very attached to, um, you know, we've, you know, there's lots of coaching and one-on-one that goes back and forth. We just kind of love on our people because we're so excited to have found a like-minded group of growth-minded folks that aren't the real estate investors that want to go deep in just one asset class. We kind of like the diversity of being across and meeting smart people like you and, and getting to know you and what you're doing and then vetting like, okay, you know what? Whitney is a solid syndicator. He's transparent in his communications. He's thorough in his financial modeling, da, 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 you know, and kind of going through and understand where are you investing? Do we believe in your process? Do we believe in the way you're running your business? So we're kind of looking at it from, from that perspective of having a group that's a lifelong investing group with us. Um, and now when we raise capital, yes, we get a little bit more equity in the deal. We always take it as equity because we want to be completely lined with our investors. Um, if they're not making money, we're not making money. So we put our own capital in the deal. And then for bringing X amount of capital, we'll usually get a little bit of kicker. We put that right back in the deal. We want it to be real clear where our alignment is. And um, I mean, that has, that has just really served us well. And I think that that's going to continue to be sort of cash machine in, in our base Maslow's hierarchy of multifamily and um, agribusiness, right? Food and shelter. We all need it no matter what. So we love this recession-proof tra- strategy. It's really been proving itself out in COVID times, actually. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, what you've described here is just, a, I mean, a massive way that you all have created so much value for, yeah. uh, for your investor base. And, and I know mm-hmm. we hear that, you know, every day on the show almost, you know, provide value, provide value, you know, value before you ever ask for anything, right? You know, and, yeah. and just continue. And it sounds like you all spend a ton of time, you know, just on training and the educational platform. And I mean, that, that stuff is not, it's not easy to pull all that stuff together. I mean, that takes a ton of time. Uh, but, but I think it will pay off. But it's kind of like one of those things, once you get that system rolling, then mm-hmm. there's tons of stuff there and resources for, for your group. Um, can you speak a little bit to how you all have grown the group and how maybe plans for future growth uh, you know, how yeah. you're doing that. I think I'm sure there's listeners who are, you know, trying to grow their investor base as well. Mm-hmm. And you can probably speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I will say, you know, we've gone through various um, different approaches and for Peter and I, and just sort of who we are as people, um, especially me, I'm a bit more introverted than he is. So I like to say a little bit more behind the scenes. I am not, um, I mean, social media, right? If you want to get masked, great. 
but we are kind of carefully cultivating our group. So we go more with like conversations with people like you who are in the real estate space and we're going to have this conversation and somebody will know somebody that says, Hey, that's right for them. You know, we kind of almost like it to be by personal referral, super organically. Like yeah. right now that we're doing this um, September super Saturdays for real estate where we're taking our two months of like doing it on the side while you're working your part-time job and we're putting it into four weekends and kind of hitting on the core pillars. And, you know, this is, this is a great way to kind of encapsulate it for people into a small, easy bite size kind of, um, um, you know, uh, picture of what's on the inside. So then now they can go, Oh, okay. This was just a little bit of investment of time and a little bit of investment of money. I got a private invitation from somebody who's already in this group who I've seen them investing and I'm seeing their results. Yeah. Ah, okay. Let me get a taste. And then when they get a taste and they see actual deals, cause we show them real stuff, like these are the types of opportunities you're going to have. And then they're like, Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. I want all in. So we've basically taken the approach of instead of putting all this money behind like, you know, a, a getting a mass group of people through Facebook or YouTube advertising, a lot of which will not be appropriately matched to what we're actually doing. We're kind of more slowly and carefully cultivating it. Um, we just think it'll be more sustaining that way. And, and we really only want to in, in, include people that we honestly think we can help. And on, to be honest about that, if you're a non-accredited person, you're not somebody we're going to have an enormous number of investment opportunities for. Will you learn a lot from the education? Yes, you will. Will you learn ways to kind of start investing in real estate so that you can get to that accredited status? Yes, you will. And we'd spend some personal coaching time with you on that. But a lot of what we're geared to, or as you know, Whitney, is investing through the syndication model because it's so perfect for that income rich, time poor, active working professional or business owner who really wants to be more passive in their investing. Nice. No, it's, yeah. it's a, a long term vision approach, right? And having yeah. a so, more solid Slow base. And steady wins yeah, as the opposed race. to fluff. Yeah. yeah. No, that's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah. So, you know, you were mentioned earlier, like you all do the uh, weekly coaching and monthly mm -hmm. question and answer, things like that. And I'm sure mm -hmm. there's a listener thinking, okay, well, you know, I should probably do some of that with my investor base, but what if I don't mm -hmm. know the answer? You know, mm. how do you, how do you handle that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, honestly, I, I, I spent many years, I started as a commercial lender. I spent many years as a, a management consultant with PwC. And then I spent many, many years in corporate sales and marketing. And I personally am of the mindset that when you don't know, don't bullshit. Simply say, hmm, you know, I actually haven't seen it asked from that angle or I don't fully know that perspective, but I'm going to get an answer for you and do it. Simple as that. Do it. Um, people smell bullshit and people are so sick of BS. Sorry, pardon my French, Whitney. <laughs> but people are, you know... Um, right? Don't you feel like people are sick to death of it For at sure. this point in life? They want real, even if real is not pretty right now and it's ugly and it's maybe some hard facts, people would rather have real and have the opportunity to be an adult and, ju and adjust to it. And as long as you do what you say you're going to do and you follow up, hey, I mean, that's a perfect opportunity to be able to have a direct follow up with somebody. Just imagine what comes from that conversation. So I just, just think that you that, took the time to find the answer and yes, get back with them. Yes. 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 And, and isn't that what we all do in life? I mean, life is an ongoing journey of learning. Right. Right. So no, that's I awesome. think it's, I think it's okay to be that. I don't like to pretend to be the expert. Um, I, I, I look at myself more like as a facilitator of knowledge acquisition and application. Yeah. So I know you all are, uh, you know, on the syndication side, uh, but you all, you all are also uh, uh, have a, a different asset class in your, in your, mm -hmm. in your, in your belt that, you know, that a lot of people aren't aware of. I thought maybe you could share about that, you know, while we have sure. just a few minutes left and, sure. and because, just to help open people's eyes. We haven't talked about this asset class too many times on the mm -hmm. show. So I think it's a great opportunity for the listener to uh, just have this in mind and learn a little more about uh, something else that we can syndicate. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So as I was mentioning, you know, Peter and I call ourselves the Maslow's hierarchy investors. So investing in need based real estate assets, and that would be shelter. So housing, you know, we invest in multifamily space in a big way through syndications, and then also agribusiness. So we started, I grew up on a farm. Um, my dad, um, I have two dads, an engineer dad and a banker dad. And we both had hobby farms on both those places on the East Coast and the West Coast. That was my growing up. And so I've sort of always been close to the sort of organic food chain, if you will. And so we discovered in our global travels, because Peter and I spent about two, three years kind of wandering around the globe, um, exploring real estate opportunities and such. And um, we stumbled into the farmland and found out that you can buy farmland that is access to rich fertile soil and rich water sources for a whole lot less expensive when you go outside of the U.S. and you have less tainted polluted soils because of the fact that they haven't been toxified with all these um, um, uh, bug repellents and stuff like that, right? So the syndication part came through an organization that we work with, an asset manager that's based in Colombia. And they are now spreading through. They're in Panama and Colombia now and continue to spread out. And what they do is think of like value add multifamily, but take it with a farmland. You might have an old family farm in Colombia that's just the new generation doesn't want to stay in farming. They're going to move to the city, right? Yet they have the realized this rich asset. It just needs to be optimized and modernized. And so this asset manager comes in and works a full development project plan from there. Oftentimes, the, go the governments are actually helping them find these opportunities because it's good all around for sort of people, planet, profit. It's good for the farmers there. It's providing opportunity in the community and an export um, opportunity for them across the world because they're exporting this food across the world. And we're able to invest in farmland in a way that doesn't, doesn't require us to be a farmer. That's super high risk to be a farmer. And, you know, it's super high risk. You have the weather. I mean, have you noticed climate change? Um, you've got the supply chain issues, the global trade and stuff. And so these guys have not just built out the farming component, but they have literally built out the distribution chain. So they have a sales channel that's allowing them to bring all this to market. And we as equity investors in their syndications are able to participate in that nice, not just the income flow, but the appreciation as you're filling out that value add on the development project, right? So when you look at kind of marking to market, the value of what you've done to that land, it's amazing. Um, now, one of the things also about farmland, nobody's been able to be invested in farmland without being a farmer has been one problem. And then secondly, they're like, well, I don't want to invest in perpetuity. How do I get my money back out of farmland? That seems difficult, right? Not the way, you know, there's a couple of asset managers, but one in particular, we really love the way that they're evolving um, their farmland projects because they're kind of setting it up almost like a bond equity type of thing where you can invest for a defined period of time. You're going to go in, you're going to put your 50 or $100,000 of capital in, you're going to get your 10, 12, 15, 20% returns over that 10 year time. Then you're going to get your capital back at that 10 year mark and be able to go, okay, going into my next one. So what a neat way to be able to feed the planet healthy organic food and prosper through a syndicated you know, investment at the same time. So you're globally diversifying, you're diversifying into an area that you probably wouldn't normally have invested in. I mean, what are you gonna do, invest in craft foods? I mean, like, I don't think so, right? So, um, so this is a really tangible way to invest in the food system and the feeding of a, of a growing planet through a real estate backed um, and collateralized investment. Um, yeah, so I, I just think it's so interesting. Right? Uh, just a different asset class that's, uh, yeah. I mean, really not talked about much yet anyway. Right. Uh, we've had a mm -hmm. few people, you know, that have talked about it, but not many. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I love exposing the listeners and just investors, you know, that listen uh, to a different type of investment. But I mean, I, I mostly grew up on a farm, but I, I would not nice. feel ready yet to invest in something like that. I have a lot of due diligence to do, you know. Um, and, right. and, uh, and so, you know, I think, you know, somebody like yourself or even a platform like you all have, you know, 
would be a, a wise way to learn, educate myself more about, you know, bef- about this type of investment or asset class uh, that's before, right. before yeah. diving in, especially in another country. You know, I think that's another barrier. That's, that's a big like thing. A, a mental block for most investors. Like, well, wait a minute, you know, I'm barely investing in the U S I'm not ready to go to Columbia or wherever, you know? Yeah. And we have developed because of exactly that, Whitney, like there wasn't anything there. And, you know, I mean, let's be candid. We made some mistakes on our first direct ownership titled farmland purchases and things like that overseas. And so we were like, okay, how can we protect ourselves a little bit more here? And then being kind of from the commercial lending standpoint, when I look at like multifamily, like this was that and, and PwC was great um, foundation really for this work because you evaluate a business on three levels. You look at the industry risk, you look at the business risk, and then you look at the management risk. And so we do that in our multifamily. I know Peter's taking you through the macro, the micro, blah, 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 and how we kind of go through that. Well, there wasn't anything for ag. And so we developed our own ag evaluation risk assessment model and the areas that we look at, but the area of the country, political risk, economic risk, all these sorts of things, you've got it. That's all in there. We cover all of that before we start investing in one of these um, syndications and we take our group through it and teach them how to do it so they can hopefully apply the same model themselves. Yeah. Karen, what's been the hardest part of this syndication journey or process for you? Whew. Um, I think the, the hardest, well, the hardest part of it was initially because I was really keen on becoming a syndicator myself. Um, we'd done some uh, smaller value add multifamily. Um, so realizing that, that to be a syndicator is a full-time job. And if you do it, you've got to go deep in that one asset class. So I'm more of a skimmer. I like to be a 30,000 foot view and look across the entire and to be able to have that diversity. I like to understand it, whatever, but kind of have that whole picture. And when you're like yourself and you go deep in a market or deep in an asset class, you really have to stay there because that's what it takes to execute the plan, right? I think when you're the operator. And so coming to grips with the fact that, no, syndicator is really not me. I'm actually, this is better um, the facilitator of the investment mastermind and the understanding of a lot of pieces at a level that keeps you safe in your investing or certainly prudent. That's, that's you know, I think so coming to grips with the fact that this is more, this is more and different than I thought it would be. And maybe it's not right for me because I have to be completely all in, in one thing. It's hard to travel when you do that, Whitney. <laughs> it's hard to travel the globe. How do you prepare for a downturn or advise your, you know, your group to be prepared for a downturn? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, um, I mean, a couple of things for sure. We talk a lot about asset allocation and not just real estate in the real estate classes. We do pull people up and kind of say, okay, Um, what should you maybe be looking at? Let's look at what the 1% do. How do they preserve their capital? Look at the, let's look at the top 20%. They don't have 65% of their assets in their, in their own primary residence. I can tell you that much. You know what I mean? They've got maybe 10%, you know? And so thinking, having people think about stuff. So prepare about, you know, making sure you have your six months emergency fund that is liquid and ready to go, especially in these times. Right. Um, So that sort of thing um, is, is a, aspect we are always kind of keeping a picture of rebalancing checking where you're at and rebalancing and making your pivots along the way and then again staying invested we do hospitality investments and stuff like that as well short-term rental because we like to travel and use those as lifestyle investments but we've definitely gone back to the core the maslow core multifamily and food so keeping them kind of in that and then non-performing notes is a new avenue that we're probably going to be adding into our mix. So we're, I'm working with a good uh, longtime asset manager in this space that does the non-performing notes, takes them from the banks, buys them off the bank's books, right? Because they got to get rid of them and we know this flood is coming, right? It's definitely coming. And so you're buying them at pennies on the dollar. Um, the one reason I really like working with this asset manager is she, she lost everything. She was a big real estate investor and lost, you know, tens of millions of dollars in the last crash, came out of it and started working on the, on the paper side and said, I'm not going to be invested in the hard assets anymore. I'm going to work on the paper side. But her number one bent 
of all her exit strategies to get out when she buys a non-performing note, number one is to keep that person in their home. So when we're buying them from the bank, we're looking at all that due diligence, all the months of notes and looking to understand, does this person maybe have the wherewithal to stay if we restructure it? Because here's the thing, we can do good and make money at the same time. Yeah. There's a healthy amount of money to be made in doing that. And we try and get them basically performing, season that note for 12 to 18 months, and then sell off that performing note now to another investor who wants that kind. And we've taken kind of the cream off the top and we've now rolled out into another one. So that's, we're putting a fund together to invest in those kind of notes because we know that storm is coming and our investors, I think, will do quite well in that area. No, that's neat to just kind of have your, uh, you can have different people on your team. They're experts in different asset classes and That's you can right. be diversified and understand different. partners. Yeah, partners are yeah. important. Uh, and so mm -hmm. just a few more questions before we run out of sure. time. Um, what do you predict in the next six to 12 months? Um, you know, should people be buyers, sellers, investors? What, what do you, uh, what mm -hmm. do you advise? Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm no economist and I'm not a tax accountant or an attorney. I want to give all my full disclosures, Whitney. Um, but myself personally, um, I mean, we are in a mode where we have been paying down debts, freeing up cash. We're getting ready for buying. Um, so, and for example, um, people who have uh, stock gains that are like, eat, okay, this has been great, but I don't want to be too greedy. Let me start taking some of these gains off the table. Um, you know, so we've done that and we're putting that into an opportunity zone, multifamily new build fund actually in Austin, Texas, because it's like, okay, that's a 10 year sheltering my gains, stuff like that. So people who are in that position, we're advising, they do some smart things to kind of shelter their gains and keep more in their pocket. Um, you know, and other than that in the next six to 12 months, I mean, I think we're going to start to see these foreclosures really start to happen in like December, January, February. It depends on, you know, right. We've got the moratorium on evictions and stuff through the end of the year, yada, yada, but we're already seeing small multifamily owners struggling, right? Because people have eviction moratoriums, but they still have to pay their mortgage. Right. Um, and so, so this is a problem. So I'm, I'm guessing it's really going to be kind of like Q1 that we start to see hit shit, shit hit the fan. And so that's, um, we're kind of hunkering down and getting ready before then placing like smaller bets, but also continuing to um, liquidate other things or bring in money from previous syndications that have now come back and kind of storing that capital up our gunpowder ready to go, you know? Yeah. Well, what's your, what's your best source for meeting new investors right now? Uh, best source for meeting new investors are current investors. Hands down. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and they understand what it takes. They've been through it. They also understand how it's changed and is continuing to change their lives. So best source of investors right there. Number one thing that's contributed to your success. Perseverance, persistence and perseverance. Yep. Never say die. There's <laughs> always like a pivot. Back? Um, we like to give back by really kind of doing exactly what we're doing. Like we, um, we, like I say, we, you know, we enroll people in this and um, we don't really have an act. We do so much one-on-one -on -one coaching, like basically is what I would say is it, it's, it's, it, people are funny about money. Money's a tough topic, right? We've all grown up with weird money things from our family. Either they talk about it all the time or they never talk about it or this, that, whatever. It's a very personal thing. We have a lot of emotions attached to it. And sometimes that makes us, that drive stupid decisions. And so we do a lot of individual coaching because we learn from it. The more you teach, the more you learn what you don't know, and then you get better. You get better yourself. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'd say our give back is really spending a lot of personal one-on-one -on -one time with our individual investors um, because it is, it's so exciting, right? When you see somebody's light bulb go off and they get it, when you see them go, oh my God, I have a way out. You mean I can retire in five years? This is phenomenal. And they just lost their job kind of like because they're in their 50s and whatever and something's happening. They're dancing. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. Like you feel the impact of changing that person's life, right? So um, 
yeah, that's, that's, cool. I, I guess that's well, Karen, give back. grateful for your time and being up early and making it happen. I think hey, I even yeah. got to see the sunrise behind you there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, just, you know, thank you again for, for being here early and, and just sharing just the importance of, of your community that you all are building and how much you all are giving and, you know, to that community. Uh, I think yeah. that's going to encourage the, the listeners who are investors and uh, that are operators, you know, and just helping their investor base and the importance of that. Uh, but then even just helping open our minds to to another asset class that's uh, that we could potentially uh, you know invest in uh, to diversify a little more as well. So grateful for that. Tell people how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you can go to our website, globalinvestoralliance.com. Um, you can also feel free to email me, Karen at globalinvestoralliance.com. Uh, I do have a very plain Karen Williams first and last name, so it can be hard to find me. So that's a great way. Um, And if you find my partner, Peter Badger on LinkedIn, then you'll find me uh, more easily as well. So you can find us in all of those places. We're happy to chat. If you go to our website and you want to have a a quick sort of strategy chat and just kind of get an understanding of what what we're about and kind of maybe share what you're struggling with or what your goals are, just uh, click the link and get on our calendar and we'll we'll have a brief chat and kind of get you going in the right direction. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.